than half of the global tuna catch in the world comes from the Western and Central Pacific Ocean. In 2007, the total value of the catch from this area alone was 3.8 billion US dollars, and that continues to rise. Three quarters of the tuna catch are from the Persane fishery, which provides tuna for canning in regional and Southeast Asian canneries. The Persane fishery targets skipjack tuna, but also records significant catches of juvenile yellowfin and big-eye tuna. There are around 300 super Persaners from countries such as the USA, Japan, Philippines, Spain, Taiwan, China and Korea, as well as thousands of longliners that fish in Pacific Island exclusive economic zones. The Pacific Island nations, who license foreign fleets to fish in their waters, have realized that there are significant employment opportunities for their people. License agreements now contain requirements to employ a percentage of local people on tuna personers fishing in their waters. Tuna persena is an extremely efficient catcher of pelagic fish, or fish that school on or near the surface. This has revolutionized the way big quantities of tuna are caught in the western and central Pacific. Persenas operating in the region vary between 45 to 100 meters in length and can carry between 500 to 2,000 tons of fish. These are held in refrigerated wells that freeze the fish to keep for long voyages. Large nets that can be up to 2,000 meters long and 250 meters deep are used to encircle a school of tuna. The bottom of the net is closed by hauling in a wire cable to prevent the fish from escaping. Most of the net is then hauled aboard using a hydraulic power block until the fish are sufficiently crowded to enable them to be transferred aboard and stored in refrigerated wells. The modern Persena has become much more efficient due to an array of new technology it has at its disposal to find schools of tuna. It uses helicopters and aeroplanes to widen the search area. Modern electronic equipment such as sonar helps detect fish under the surface. S-band radars are used to locate birds that feed on bait fish with tuna. And specialized equipment is also available to read water temperatures and provide weather, current, and other useful information. This technology is complemented by visual searching performed by the crew using high-powered binoculars from high vantage points such as the crow's nest. The crew look for signs of fish schools rippling on the surface or birds feeding on bait fish. They also look for floating logs and other debris that attracts bait fish, which in turn attracts tuna who feed on the bait fish. Fish aggregating devices, or fads, are a particularly good way to attract tuna. Fads are set by the fishing operators and may be free floating or anchored. There are thousands of fads deployed in the Western and Central Pacific tuna grounds and have proven so successful that they are restricted to certain times of the year as a fisheries management measure. Sets on schools of tuna that are swimming on the surface without a fad or log to occupy them and hold them in position are called free sets. These are much more difficult to successfully execute. Once a school of tuna has been detected, the fishing master must determine if there is enough fish in the school to warrant setting the net. If there is, the Persena is strategically positioned to begin the Persane operation. This is after taking into account factors such as the behavior of fish, current, and wind and sea conditions. The set begins with a fishing master signaling for the net skiff to be released from the ramp at the stern of the Persena. The skiff then drags the end of the net into the water. The Persena then encircles the school of tuna and returns to the net skiff to retrieve the bag or sack end of the net.
to begin the pursing procedure. The most vulnerable part of the pursing operation is during the pursing, when the fish can escape before the net is fully enclosed. The crew use a variety of techniques to keep the fish away from the purseina while hauling in the purse cable. This includes throwing green dye bombs into the water and making wash with the vessel's support speedboats. Once the purse rings are bunched together at the surface, the escape route for the fish has been closed. The purseina can then begin the operation of hauling in the net and crowding the fish towards the ship. The power block hauls in the net while crew are positioned in the net stacking area below the power block. They gather the cork line, netting, the chain line and the purse rings and stack them ready for the next set. Once the net is sufficiently hauled aboard, the crew sack up the access net still in the water by pulling it aboard with winches. They do this until the fish are sufficiently crowded to begin the brailing operation. The brailing operation is undertaken utilizing auxiliary booms and winches to maneuver the brailer through the crowded fish and onto the vessel. Up to five tons of fish are scooped up in each braille, lifted aboard and lowered over the hopper hatch. The brailer's quick release is then freed and the fish are directed to the wells on the lower wet deck via chutes. Once all the fish are aboard and stored in the refrigerated wells, the rest of the net is sorted and run through the power block to complete stacking in preparation for the next shot. The net skiff is then winched aboard into its stowed position at the stern of the vessel, signaling the end of the set. The Persena is now ready to continue the search for more schools of fish to set on. Living on board a fishing vessel can be challenging. Persenas can spend weeks at sea in often harsh weather conditions. The crew can be a mix of different cultures, countries and languages, with everyone living and working in close proximity to each other. Cooking a breakfast in the morning at 6 o'clock, 11 o'clock lunch, afternoon at 5 o'clock. Sometimes we're cooking a beef, steak, a soup, another uh, plenty of cooking uh, style of Style, uh, cooking. The hours spent working is long, and when the Persena is not fishing, the crew are expected to undertake maintenance of gear and equipment such as mending the nets. on a Persena must be familiar with the major parts of the Persena and how the Persena operation is conducted. The central piece of gear in the operation is the Persena net. It is a huge rectangular piece of netting hung between the cork line, which floats on the surface, and the chain line, which is weighted. This allows the net to sink to its maximum depths, with the intention of forming a huge wall that prevents the fish from escaping. Persane rings are attached by chain bridles at intervals along the footline, as well as a wire cable which is threaded through the rings and connected to the purse winch. The purse winch is a powerful, hydraulically driven winch, generally positioned amidships. One of the purse winch drums holds all the purse wire prior to sitting and pays it out through a block attached to the davit and the purse rings as the net is set. Once the net has encircled the school of fish, two drums on the purse winch are used to haul in the wire purse cable from the bow and stern sections of the net. This closes the net and prevents the fish from escaping. The main boom supports a hydraulically driven power block suspended at its upper end. The power block is rubberized with raised cleats to grab the net as it turns and haul it aboard after pursing is completed. The entire net, from chain line to cork line and purse rings, passes through the power block, descending to the deck level for manual sacking by the crew. The net skiff is used to drag the end of the net into the water at the commencement of the shot. This holds the sack or bag end of the net while the purse encircles the fish with the rest of the net. 
This skiff also assists in holding the purseiner in position while pursing and net hauling operations take place. Many modern purseiners now have bow and stern thrusters. So the role of the skiff in pulling the purseiner during those operations can be less important. The purseiner may also use a variety of auxiliary vessels to enhance fishing and searching operations. Speedboats are used to create a wash to prevent fish from escaping under the purseiner during pursing. Towboats help pull the cork line and assist in the hauling operation. Tender boats are used to check fads and other floating logs that may have fish and to assist in general fad operations. The brailer is a heavy metal ring with attached netting and a quick release to close the bottom. It is used to transfer up to five tons of tuna in one lift from the sacked up net to the fish wells aboard the purseiner. Most purseiners operating in the western and central Pacific tuna fishery now use the Spanish style brailing system. This uses an auxiliary boom and a series of winches to drag the brailer through the crowded fish and out of the water. A reinforced unloading boom is used to support the cork line and sack. This makes the operation fully automated, dispensing with the use of the net skiff in the brailing operation as had previously occurred. Safety and vessel rules must be observed at all times. New crew members should familiarize themselves with the safety equipment on the vessel, as well as safety signs and designated areas such as non-smoking sections. Appropriate personnel protective equipment should be worn when working. Pollution of the sea is to be avoided at all times. The correct disposal of rubbish, including damaged netting, must be followed. Remember, the protection of the marine environment is in your best interest as a fisher as well as the interest of every nation in the Pacific Island region. Visit the Persein set from start to finish. This time we'll focus on the various roles undertaken by crew members and the need to observe safety at all times. The Perseining operation uses large, heavy gear with the potential to inflict serious injury or even death. So crew need to be vigilant, particularly during setting, hauling and brailing operations. The Perseiner begins the set on a free swimming school of skipjack tuna. with the release of the net skiff from its position on the stern of the vessel. The net skiff drags the bag end of the net into the water. As the net is deployed, crew members must stay well clear of the net as it tumbles off the stern. The risk of being dragged into the water by the net is great during this part of the operation and the purseiner will be unable to stop until the entire net has been deployed. Crew members must also keep well clear of the purse wire as it runs from the purse winch and out through the block on the purse davit. The set is now nearly complete and the purseiner slows as it approaches the net skiff to retrieve the bag or sack end of the net. It has taken about eight minutes to deploy the net and hopefully the fish have stayed inside the circle made by the net. The net skiff crew pass a line attached to the bag end of the net to crew members on board the purseiner. This is then attached to a messenger line from the Persane winch. The net skiff is now free to go to the other side of the vessel and be attached to the towing bridle lines and assist in pulling the Persaner away from the net as pursing begins. The critical pursing operation takes about 25 to 30 minutes as the wire is hauled in from both ends of the net to close the net as quickly as possible. Crew members must again keep well clear of the purse wire as it is hauled aboard and under no circumstances should it be touched while either being deployed or hauled aboard. While pursing takes place, speedboats, the helicopter and green dye bombs are used to keep the fish away from the open part of the net. The fish can potentially escape by either diving under the net or under the purseiner. Once the purse rings reach the surface, the pursing part of the set is completed 
and the fish are trapped inside the closed net. The hauling of the net to crowd the fish into the sack or bag section of the net now takes place. New crew members are likely to be part of the net stacking team. They will be positioned under the power block to systematically stack the cork line, body of the net, and chain line and purse rings as they descend from above. The net needs to be stacked correctly so that it is ready to set again and flows out smoothly during the next set. Crew members who assist with the stacking of the net must wear hard hats. This is because fish, heavy steel purse rings and the chain can fall onto the crew below if they aren't vigilant. Crew members should also wear correct footwear and gloves when stacking the net. One or more experienced crew members will stand at the purse davit to individually release the purse rings from the purse wire and allow them to go up through the power block with the net. Releasing the purse rings can be a dangerous activity with potential damage to a person's hands. The crew member delegated with that task must watch very carefully and act quickly. The net hauling part of the operation can take up to one and a half hours to complete in preparation to sack or dry up the net. The sacking or drying up stage is a process that slowly and evenly hauls the access heavy sack netting aboard. This can take an hour to complete depending on how much fish is in the sack. At the end of the sacking process, the catch is sufficiently crowded to braille the fish from the sack onto the vessel. Modern purseiners that use the Spanish style brailing operation are able to lift much larger brails of fish. They can lift between four to five tons, which speeds up the brailing operation. This ensures that the fish are quickly transferred to the refrigerated well, resulting in improved quality. It also lessens the time spent idle and allows the purseiner to quickly resume the search for another school of fish on which to make a set. Once the brailer full of fish is lifted aboard, it is lowered over the hopper, released and distributed via chutes to the fish wells on the wet deck below. Remember to stand well clear of the brailer as it is lifted aboard and swung over to the hopper. A four to five ton brailer fish can inflict serious damage to anyone it swings into. Once all the fish are aboard, the rest of the net is hauled through the power block and the net skiff is hauled aboard in preparation for the next set. A purseiner can make up to four sets a day. These usually start with an early morning dawn set on tuna associated with a fish aggregating device. The sets continue late in the afternoon when fishing on free schools of tuna. The tuna persane fishery in the central and western Pacific is critical to the economies of many of the countries in the region. They provide many employment opportunities for Pacific people. Pacific Islanders engaged on perseiners have the opportunity to work in one of the most exciting, progressive fisheries in the world. They can also develop skills that will ensure their future.